Welcome to Go Rangers Radio, where the New York Rangers are always the talk of the town. If you bleed red, white, and Rangers blue, hail the king, follow the bread man, and know how to spell Capo Caco, then you've tuned to the right place. And now, here are your handsome hosts, Kevin Delury and Paul Cuthbert. They're not always going to get it right, but you can be damn sure they'll pretend they are. Now, let's go Rangers Radio. Yeah, good evening everybody and welcome to Go Rangers Radio. Broadcasting live from the Go Hockey Media Studios in New York, baby. Yours truly, Mr. Paul Cuthbert. And everybody, please say hello to your friend and mine, Mr. Kevin DeLore. KD, what the devil's going on? Dude, I don't know what's worse right now, my 401k or the Rangers. <laughs> Hopefully it's the Rangers and not your 401k, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Took a beating today, my friend. Took a beating. All right. Not as bad as the beating that the Rangers took against the Devils the other night, but well, not looking good. Well, good evening, everybody. It's Monday, March 9th, and me and Katie are hanging out with you on a, on a Monday night instead of a Wednesday night because the uh, Strangers are going to be in Rotto on Wednesday, a little late, so we figured we'd push things up and, and go through a little therapy session here as our New York Rangers, or I should say, your New York Rangers, after 68 games, are 36, 28, and 4 with 76 points. Seventh in the Metro, 17th in the league. Three points, KD, out of a wild card, and three points behind those New York Icelanders who are now actually out of a playoff spot. Welcome to our world, Icelanders fans. And uh, and here we go. So, KD, I'm just going to say one thing. Got to get rid of the Shesty guy, man. Hurting the squad. <laughs> Got to get George Brutal. back. He, get get him back in the nets, man. This guy Shesty's just he's a, he's an albatross, man. Yeah, because uh, Georgiev is playing been playing so well lately. <laughs> <laughs> Winning, well, they won that Capitals game despite your your boy Georgiev. Uh, thank goodness for Mika Zibanejad, saved the day, hottest man on the planet in any sport <laughs> in any country right now. He's on fire. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look. You know, Shesturkin is the starting goalie, so I guess he was well enough to play, so Quinn went with him. Now, obviously, we can argue or debate whether or not he should have played him. I mean, I would have liked him to maybe get a couple more practices. You would assume he would have been rusty, but look, you know, if he's your number one guy, um, which Quinn has said he is, you go to him and, and you ride him. He's going right back to him tomorrow, which he should, in Dallas. It's a mistake. Um, and, and, Put Georgie in there. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I, the goal, I mean, to be whether it's Shashorkin, Georgiev, or Lundqvist, none of them have been playing particularly well lately. Um, and, and I think that's what's, what's happening here. I mean, the defense had, has been on the decline for the last couple of weeks, but the goaltending had been so good it was making up for it. Now that the goaltending is, has been average, uh, you know, and I think I'm putting that nicely lately, um, we're seeing, you know, uh, you know, a lot of sort of warts here, you know, on the defense again. So uh, it, it's a concern. They got to they got to clean some of this defense up. And, you know, a lot of rumors flying around today that, uh, you know, uh, the young Mr. Uh, Condre Miller uh, may be uh, becoming a Ranger in, in the next couple of days or at least maybe going to Hartford. Um, so maybe there's some help coming on the left side of our defense. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Stay home, Cam. Let this uh, let this next couple of weeks go. We'll see what happens. I don't know if he wants to come into this mix right now. But, hey, look, man, maybe it's, uh, you know, Brady Shea. Maybe that's the missing piece here. You know, this is what, hey, you know. I, I said it when <laughs> One you, and four you in asked, the last five, baby. <laughs> hey, you asked me, you said, you know, do I think that the defense is going to take a step back? I, I, I thought they would have, and, and they are. I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily Shea, but – Look, like I've been saying the last couple of shows, you take a guy like that out who's sort of been a mainstay on the defense, whether he's been good or bad, um, you know, it, it, it jumbles things up a bit. And, and it seems like it's, it is having a little bit of an effect. I think Kreider going down obviously has had a major impact as well. 
uh, defensively because he's good both both sides uh, of the ice. So I think between losing Shea, Kreider going down, obviously Shashorkin being out uh, because, you know, Georgiev is just unreliable in there. Um, <laughs> Come on, man. I'm, I'm just going to take shots at you all day long. <laughs> We're going back Georgiev. and forth, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, the def- I mean, look, the offense is going to be – is going to put up points um, or put up goals every night, whether it's uh, Mika or Panarin, um, Buchnevich, or, or uh, on defense through uh, D'Angelo. So you never have to worry about the offense. They're going to be there. So, you know, the defense, as we saw from basically mid-December to mid-February, I mean, they were good. I mean, they weren't great. They were good. It, the defense just has to be, like, like literally mediocre. And this team... It, should be good enough with this offense, and if the goaltending goes back to what it was, should make the playoffs. And, you know, despite the struggles that they've had, like you said, you know, one in four in their last five, they're still only three points out. So we're still in this thing. You know, it, you know, a little bit of a speed bump here, but we're still right there. I mean, there's no need. I mean, there's only 14 games left in the season, but, you know, no need to panic just yet. Um, and and there's, there's plenty of games to go. Well, there certainly is. Uh, it would have been nice if they had have, uh, beat the Devils at home, though. That's a team that you think they should have definitely have beaten, especially coming off, uh, you know, a good game against St. Louis, even though they lost. We talked about that. Hey, you know, the game against the Caps was just a, a wild night. Uh, we get up on top of that. We get the two points, yeah, the Mika Zabanajad show, and it was just a, a wonderful night uh, for all of us who, you know, we can all say, hey, we, where were you or we were there when we saw that, that magical night and that just crazy hockey game. I mean, if you're a hockey fan, you know, you just love it. Not so much uh, as a Caps fan maybe there at the end, but, um, you know, just for us, it was just great watching it. You know, the, the, the repetitive thing, obviously, with the squad and is the, the youth and, you know, uh, all the changes. We've been, you know, over this so many times on the podcast throughout the season. Uh, you know, all of us as fans are just sitting here and just watching this ride and everything. And, and, and it, it's it kind of, I guess the devil's, you know, it's just frustrating because you just don't understand, you know, how they end up, you know, on the other side of that the other night, especially it seems it's almost like it's teed up, you know, come off that emotional win. You're seeing what's going else going on else, uh, you know, around the Metro and, and as far as the uh, wild card and playoff points. And you figure that's just a game they're going to come out banging, you know, whether, you know, you know, it's just gets in there and it's great to see him come back. And it's a, it's a positive thing for the team and everything. I mean, the goals, you know, a couple of deflections, you know, Klaus and uh, Paul Mary getting a couple pops there, too. I mean, it is what it is. The Devils have actually been playing well the last couple of games, so it kind of just didn't line up for them. But I think as a fan here, you, you know, how angry do you want to get uh, because of this whole, you know, here we are, the rebuild thing and, the, you know, uh, taking it easy on these guys, busting chops. Did Kako have a goal the other night? Did he score? <laughs> See, you know, the other, so the other he, you know, night, how about, how, how, has he scored this year? Oh, no, but, has he yeah, scored not, in this calendar year? But I'm not allowed to get on cap, you know, because he's only 19. So, I mean, so there's all these different things. Like I said, we could sit here and scream and yell about them, but you know, you bring it up three points out of a spot. Uh, yeah, the season's kind of winding down here. You look at the schedule coming up Dallas, Colorado, you know, um, Arizona. And then they come back for a game against the Flames and then home and home versus the Pens. And, you know, we, we talked about these all being buzzsaw games, and, and these are all big games for those other teams too. So it's not going to be easy. So I don't know um, how all of us here as fans should really kind of just, you know, get too excited because it might come crashing down this week. And, and sure enough, I mean, the last time they were going into play, uh, you know, Colorado came into town, I swore up and down they weren't going to beat Colorado, and then they beat them that night. Uh, you know, I could sit here and say, hey, there's no way they're going to beat Dallas. There's no way they're going to beat Rado. And Arizona's been tough all year, too. And, and, you know, they might go out here and win three in a row. I mean, that's just the way the season's been going for us. Yeah, I, what I'll say is this. Is, is As frustrating of a loss as that was against the Devils the other night, I mean, how much fun is this right now, Paulie? I mean, like, how much fun was that Capitals game the other night? I, I didn't think I would experience that that high of a high <laughs> this year with, the rebuild. I mean, that was fun. I mean, that brought, you know, brought me back to, you know, it's been a couple of years since we've had that feeling in a, a meaningful game in March 
back and forth, the edge of your seat. I mean, you know, I, literally jumping off my couch, like screaming in my house. You know, I, I didn't expect to be at that point this year. I mean, this is fun. I mean, and then you get the roller coaster of it, of, of losing that devil. And it's just like a, a knife to the heart, you know. And, and again, as, as tough as that is, it's still fun. This is why we're, you know, why we watch sports and, and why we love the Rangers and, and what it's all about. And, and, to, and to have this for this month um, and not expect, this is great. This is what it's all about. This is why they're doing the rebuild. Like, you know, we can get behind this young team and really root for them. So, yeah, it's a frustrating loss, but I, I think, you know, uh, we're going to have a bunch more of these sort of great moments like we had um, last Thursday against the Capitals. So I'm, I'm just excited for that. I'm excited for the young guys to sort of go through this process now and see who steps up and who doesn't. And, hey, look, if Kako, you know, steps up in these next, you know, three weeks, I, I think the, the early – the early part of the year is it's almost forgotten that you know he really didn't do anything. If he if he scores some big goals down the stretch of the year, it's not and, and the Rangers make the playoffs. It's not happening. Hey, look, look, you but know that's what? that's what happens at this time of the year, man. Happening. You don't know who's going to step up. You're not you know what? it's not happening. I'm going to record this right now. Man, it's not going to happen. And you know you what? You are being negative. Gonna, yeah, I am. Don't be, be negative. negative. You know because I <laughs> hope. I hope. Listeners of this podcast and Ranger fans, they turn around and they give me the bill. I hope Cackle puts in, you know, <laughs> and proves me wrong. I want it, yeah. But I'm telling you right now, if it hasn't happened after, what, 68 games? It's not happening, man. It's just not happening. But, hey, look, you know, and I, I mean, with Ke'Andre Miller, I mean, let's stick on this for a little bit here. I mean, do you bring him in? I mean, because... You know, the Shea going out, Smith coming in. They've got that luxury right now where they could actually put him in. But do, do you want to do that to the kid right now? Is is that a kid that you want to, you know, I guess, you know, Katie, what's the thing? Are we playing with house money here? Um, you know, is the team really looking at this and saying, hey, let's really, really try and get into the playoffs, right? Or do they just play with house money and say, hey, bring him in. You know, let's just, you know, get it going here a little earlier. We got nothing to lose. So we'll see what happens. What's your take if you had to make the call and, and J.D. and Gorton sat you down, and I know you're emailing them every week and giving them <laughs> ideas, but if they sat across the table from you and said, Kevin, what do you think we should do with Andre Miller now that Wisconsin has uh, been eliminated from the uh, their their league there, their playoffs? I, I think we're playing with house money. I like to see him up. I like to see him. I like to throw him in there. I like to see how he reacts and, and see how he plays. And, it, and he may be over his head, in over his head. You know, and, and, and maybe it's not the right thing to do. But for me, you know, I, I like to see what, what he can do and, and, and how he can play against these NHL players. You know, we saw Kreider make the jump uh, from BC right over and he thrived. So, you know, defense is a whole nother ball game and, um, and, and you just don't know how he's going to react. You know, Fox is such a unique player. You know, you, you see him do it. You're like, oh, Andre Miller would be able to do it too. But, you know, it, it's, it's easier said than done, but, you know, I, I'd like to see him in there. I think you have a spot open. You know, I think Brendan Smith has been okay, but you do have that, that spot, you know, on, on the left side, you know, on the defense with Shea being traded, and, and it's there for him. Um, now, having said that, what do I think the Rangers are going to do? They'll probably end up sending him down to Hartford because if you've seen what they've done all year long with these young guys is that they've just been patient with them. They haven't for the most part, thrust them into um, a difficult situation. They haven't put a guy in a sink or swim spot. So, you know, I, I they'll probably not do that with Kondre either. Or maybe they'll send him down to Hartford for a couple of games, see how he does. And if he's dominating, they'll bring him back up and stick him in the lineup. But, you know, I, I think initially they'll probably send him to Hartford is my gut feeling on it. I like to see him just bring him up because – you know, I, again, I, I've been all about the rebuild this year and, and get these guys, you know, some action and some playing time or whatever. But if, if you look at the way the Rangers have gone all year, it's been patient with these guys, you know, a little taste, you know, get them, um, you know, feeling good about themselves, put them in, in situations that will um, have them succeed. And uh, they'll probably do that with Andre, bring him along a little slower, get him a little AHL uh, competition. Okay, yeah, he can handle it. Let's bring him up for the final, 
you know, 10 games, nine games or whatever it is. All right. What do you, 